PwC crunched some numbers last year predicting artificial intelligence will contribute $135 billion to the Saudi economy in 2030, making the kingdom the biggest beneficiary of the technology in the Middle East. Microsoft's Nadella also believes AI can drive your nation's fortunes. How will AI propel the Saudi economy to a longer-term 2030 vision thanks to AI advancements in your country? Thank you, Karen, and I couldn't agree more with His Excellency the Prime Minister and Her Excellency Paula that generative AI is, is a general purpose technology is definitely going to transform humanity as we know it today. But if you look at the tipping point where we're crossing from the B2C use cases to a general purpose technology that diffuses across industries, this is where we can reap the fruits. And within the Saudi context, we take huge pride. If you look at the secret sauce, Today, for leadership in generative AI, you need Gen AI leadership, and His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman is very bullish about it. Secondly, you need industry expertise and an ecosystem approach. And hands down, I have the pleasure of working with all of my colleagues uh, within this panel. And if there's one story that is near and dear to my heart that I would like to share with you that exemplifies the momentum that is happening today is in healthcare. And this story has to do with genetic diseases. And the reason why it's, it's so close to my heart, I actually lost my eldest sister to a genetic disease. And this particular disease that I'm going to share with you is called sickle cell disease, which is all about your red blood cells transforming into a crescent, into a crescent that basically blocks vessels. This could affect limbs. This actually affects the global south in Africa, 75%. And with generative AI in partnership with Google, we have launched Google Cloud Node last August, and a startup called Nanopalm, which actually leveraged generative AI to do drug formulation instead of 10 to 15 years, a drug that historically used to cost $3 million, today with $300,000, in less than two years, leveraging large language models to correlate proteins and enzymes with nanorobots that inserted through your skin can penetrate the walls of cells and can do genetic editing to prevent those genetic diseases. There's a trial right now in the National Guard Hospital in Riyadh where 15 patients are praying for such a solution. This could not be possible without generative AI and without this ecosystem approach in partnership with all of you. Saudi Arabia has been reliant on US technology to build out your AI capabilities. Are trade barriers and heightened geopolitical risks getting in the way of AI being the great equalizer? First of all, if we recognize today, and all of us as a panelist, that generative AI is a general purpose technology, similar to the internet, to the steam engine or electricity, we can't prevent this from proliferating and giving this access to everybody. So we can't leave anybody behind in this era. But going back to your question, the kingdom has been very consistent. We're pro-innovation, pro-partnership. And we took a huge pride in our partnership, for example, with the US and also with South Korea and Rwanda and the UN, in which the kingdom has grown since the launch of Vision 2030 in terms of our cloud, GPU, and AI capacity tremendously. We've attracted more than $6.2 billion. We, we remain consistent. We have a build, partner, and acquire strategy. And right now, thanks to folks like uh, Google and, and your peers within the industry, we're having plenty of access to those technologies. So you're not worried about the US Chips Act and how it Im impacts China, for instance? What I would recommend is that we work closely with our partners. If they have concerns on technology leakage, similar to, for example, the kingdom have just acquired Lucid as, a, as an EV. The last thing we want is patent or technology leakage. And if it's necessary to put restrictions around that, we're all for it. So again, this is a general purpose technology. We should leave no one behind. But if there's concerns about technological leakage, we'll be more than happy, all of us, to collaborate with our alliance partners to make sure that we restrict access to those potential areas of leakage. Saudi Arabia was one of the 28 countries that signed the Bletchley Declaration around the safe development and use of AI. Yet on the human rights tracker, safety from the state scores low, sub five out of 10. What would you say to those who fear that ethics in Saudi Arabia will take a back seat to rapid AI advancement to harness profits? I'd say let's stick to the facts. We're at Davos, we're talking about rebuilding trust. 
the World Economic Forum would not name the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as the number one digital riser two years in a row, specifically around files like women empowerment and tech, where we have jumped from 7% to 35%, beating the EU average, the Silicon Valley average, and even the G20 average. We also have a particular kind of interest in women entrepreneurship. Riyadh right now is the fifth largest capital when it comes to women you know, entrepreneurship. These are the kind of facts that we need to stick to to make sure that we respond. We take huge pride in what we're doing, and we're going to stay the course in empowering people, focusing on women and youth, safeguarding the planet as we're jumping from green photons to electrons to hydrogen, and shape new frontiers in partnership with all of you. AI is going to be a great equaliser at this stage. Yes, no, maybe add some caveats. It's a question of uh, not if, but when. Mm -hmm. And I think it's definitely down the line going to be the great equaliser. When? In a couple of years. I would project in the next three to five years.